messages coming in for uh, Nicholas Roach, including these ones, lads, was on the Plateau de Bay on Saturday to see Nicholas. He gave us a nod on the way up, which was pretty impressive given that he must have been in absolute agony on that bike. He also took some time out for photos on stage 12. Hopefully he can survive the Alps this week and finish well. Please pass on my best wishes and support. He's a paragon of true grit and professionalism, says Leon. And Colin Kildare says, please pass on good vibes to Nicholas Roach. An awful lot of people at home are following him and his column and wishing him well. Don't be so down on yourself. You are doing us proud. Those are the messages coming in, Nicholas. First of all, thanks very much for talking to us. Hi, good evening. Uh, and we do apologise for interrupting your rest day. I know you probably have better things to be doing than to be taking calls from us, but, uh, but thanks for chatting to us. How are you feeling? A lot of people would have been watching and a lot of people uh, may well have read your column today in which you described Saturday's stage as probably the worst day you've had in the last few years. Well, definitely. You know, I mean, I've had bad days on the bike, obviously. But, uh, you know, in terms of performance and being so far away from from my initial goal, you know, I, it's it's normal to have a bad day uh, once in a while. But if, if you're not informed into your goals or, or further ahead, it's not a problem. The problem is I've been telling everybody that I was hoping that I was going to be ready. And unfortunately, I had this kind of crisis on, on that very particular day. Do you mind talking to us about the crisis, about what happened? Yeah, well, uh, you know, I mean, um, after my my big crash in, in the Dauphiné, um, it took me, uh, you know, I was five days completely completely off training, and then I, I had about a week of a uh, re-education and where I started doing normal training, and then that was it, I was hitting the tour. So, obviously, it would have been way too easy and too simple if I was at 100% and been able to compete with those guys who've been preparing the tour in the most uh, dedicated and, you know, a per- perfect way, if I can say. Mm. So, um, you know, I was kind of happy where I was and saying, all right, um, I arrived at the Dauphiné Libre in June at 100% of my form before my crash. So maybe, even though I took those days off and had to kind of recover and all that, maybe my form wasn't so far off. Yeah, and uh, I was kind of, um, you know, I was down physically, so I had to keep my morale up, and I was trying to to keep focus and keep um, keep looking forward to my good results and all that. And um, I was doing fine until that day, actually. You know, I was tenth overall, so I was even doing better than what I would would have thought. And uh, unfortunately, uh, in the climb, even before Plateau Bay, I was already in in you know in the hurt box and <laughs> struggling. <laughs> And then uh, eventually in Plata Bay, uh, I was feeling a bit better than in, than in Coldan, yes, but uh, way down on, on the top, guys, you know? So you, uh, you know, this is a mountain stage with a number of climbs. I think it was, was it the fourth climb that you really, that, that was when it went, that's when you felt that you just had nothing in the legs? Yeah, I, it's the second last climb, so I don't remember if it was fourth or sure. fifth, or, but it, it was around that anyway. Um, Can you describe like, that uh, feeling to us, Nicholas? Like, you know, you're just yeah, you're cycling uh, there, you're trying to keep in touch with the leaders, and what happens then? Exactly, you know, it, it was a very particular feeling because I honestly wasn't expecting it. Um, like, even in the morning, I was still doing some interviews, and I was pretty convinced, and I said, all right, Blues already then was hard for me, but uh, I paced myself up, and I, I I limited the loss, and I was up there anyway, and 17th on the stage, and 10th in GC, so I was still satisfied. So I definitely wasn't expecting it. Ray starts off full gas and I'm, you know, legs are okay and I'm pretty convinced that today is going to be the right day and stay on top 10 and, 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 and be there for, for the outs afterwards. So I was all focused and everything. First climb, second climb, third climb was, was good and sticking up to the front with, with the rest of my team around me and they were doing a great job with me. And then, um, eventually, um, not even at the bottom of that climb because I was still feeling okay at the bottom of the climb. But just as we were going by, I was kind of feeling, mm, are these guys accelerating or am I going worse and worse and mm-hmm. worse? And then obviously you kind of start looking behind and I was riding more or less up the front. So I was kind of looking behind and the bunch is pretty small, but it's still quite big or too big for 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 it to be, you know, quite significant to say that I was going fast enough to, to drop all these guys out. Sure. So I was saying, ah, oh, it's strange. I'm kind of flat out here and there's still about 50 or, or, or 60 guys and you know when I'm usually in this situation there's only about maybe 20 or 25 not 60 guys left so then you kind of start thinking and saying oh uh, what if today is my bad day and this is probably the most important day of the tour so far and maybe one of the most important days of 
the, 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 the turf full stop, you know? Mm. So then, of course, you kind of start thinking. But as you're thinking, obviously, your legs don't get much better <laughs> uh, as it goes by, and you're kind of going down, going down, going down. And then once you just look back, and all you can see is the team cars, and there's no more riders behind you. And it's like, uh-oh, this does not look good. There's another, there's a short descent, and then there's another three or four K climb. And then if I'm not there with these guys and I don't make it to the bottom of uh, Plateau Bay with the main bunch, I'm going to lose 20 minutes today. And it's just going to be everything game over. So, you, you, you know, you kind of panic, but you don't want to panic too much because um, it was the case of losing everything. So eventually I kind of limited the loss and get back onto the, the front group on, on, on the very long descent on the way uh, to the valley. And then we just had about 20k valley and, and to get into the, the Plateau Bay. And then once I was in the valley, uh, my kind of mind changed around and was saying, all right, I'm just going to eat as much as I can now and just hope that I was just hunger flat or, you know, that I was just lacking energy. So I had a few cereal bars and I, during those like 15, 20k, I ate what I would usually eat in about 50k. So, right. you know, I was just eating and eating and saying, all right, hopefully now it's just a question of a bad moment, not a bad day. It's just a bad moment and I'm going to make it. And unfortunately, after two or three k's on, on Plata Bay, I kind of realized that, no, <laughs> it wasn't just a question of eating something. It was just that the, the, the legs were not responding and I was, uh, you know, the two feet on the same pedal yeah. and, and not, not going anywhere. So, you know, my, my teammate, Hubert Dupont, stayed with me and uh, because he knew that if I was left on my own, I would have just completely cracked. So he just kind of, he was in front of me and I was just doing the, like, the cruise control, playing the PlayStation, saying, go a bit quicker, slow down, go a bit quicker, slow down. And we eventually made it on top. And, you know, lucky enough, didn't lose too much time, but just way too much time for my... Um, you know, for the goal I had set up in the morning. And Nicholas, what kind of a, you talked a lot about the psychological aspect of what was going on and, and a bit about the physical, about just the need to get some energy in there somehow. I, I can only imagine that there's pretty serious physical pain involved uh, when you're in that kind of a state as well, is there? Well, there's obviously, the, the, the pain comes maybe even before the psychological thing. But, I mean, you know, th th there wouldn't be anything interesting in, in for instance, the diary or anything to say that I have sore legs. Because, I mean, everybody who goes on the bike knows that you have sore legs. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, so, it's like if you go and play rugby and you come home, or Gaelic, and you come home without a bruise somewhere, you know, it wouldn't be right. <laughs> so, uh, it's just, I I prefer to talk about all the other things because yeah. being a cyclist is not only having sore legs. It's also all these key moments where uh, it goes from having sore legs and actually letting go or not letting go or trying to push it a bit harder or maybe a bit too hard and then completely blowing. Yeah. Um, just for instance, like in Uzardi then where I had a hard time at the bottom of the climb and I eventually uh, rode really strong and I had my, my teammate with me once again at that stage and the two of us had a, had a great climb even though uh, it seemed that it was going to be a catastrophe at the bottom of the climb and that was a lot of the mental aspect. But on the other hand, two days later, same thing happened but just never made it. You know? <laughs> You seem to be Nicholas. In, uh, you seem to be in okay form tonight. Like you know, you, uh, I think people reading this morning might have been a bit concerned uh, over the weekend that, uh, and you were writing again yesterday, but that, that this could really dampen your spirits for the rest of the tour. Has the rest day given you, uh, you know, a new lease on life? I think so. You know, um, I, th I think even yesterday I was still a bit grumpy and and really disappointed, um, which is also normal because th this year. I was expecting to have, like, to confirm last year and to do even better. And it started off with a really bad tendonitis in November. And then I eventually got back. And then training camp in January, I tore my the intersection with my quads and my ligaments in the knee. So I was out for another three weeks. Eventually, I did the mistake of wanting to come back too quick. And I completely burned myself at the start of the season. And then I had a terrible crash in Flesh Wallon during the Classics. And then because I only ride those weak stage races, um, which are my, my strong point, um, my, my training program is done in a way that I have a lot of training and then a bit of racing, a lot of training and a bit of racing. But the thing is, when the only few days that I race, the thing goes wrong, everything goes wrong. Yeah. So it's just when something goes wrong on one day in a race, it's the last month that goes away and then you just have to look into the next race. But if something goes wrong in the next race, it's another month. 
and then when you're in March, it's already three months, but when you're in June, it's six months <laughs> thrown away, you know? Yeah. So I was kind of hoping things were going to get better, and they got better, and uh, I was back on top form in the Dauphiné and all convinced that all that was behind me, and Nico was back and strong as ever, and I was going to have a tour uh, of my life. And then I had the worst crash of my career so far when I hit that pothole at 80k an hour and finished against the wall, you know? Yeah. So... Um, Oh, all that, plus the fact that I had this down day, I was kind of saying, oh, I was hoping that the tour was going to save my year and that I would just, you know, press like clear memory and just forget about all, all the, the bad incidents that I had this year and just move on with the tour and the tour is going to be good and just to keep, keep a good memory and, uh, and keep it going, you know? Yeah. So it, it was normal that it was just, everything just kind of fell apart that, that day and, it was just kind of, it was my personal disaster, even though when you think about it, it's not the biggest disaster. But it was just that day on that moment during those few seconds that I crossed the line, I was like, oh, I did something wrong and it's not going to work for me. Well, listen, I know. And, you know, today I sat in the hotel and I had my my mother, my little brothers, my girlfriend uh, and and some, some friends who came by and, uh, you know, just simple things, but just to see family, friends, enjoy coffee in the afternoon without just thinking about the race everything kind of cheered me up and hopefully I'll be able to to ride again aggressively and I'm pretty motivated for the this last week you know keep the famous Irish spirit going yeah well, that's great to hear and I know one of the things you mentioned was that you were sorry to have disappointed the Irish fans who were there but I have to say there's loads of goodwill coming in for people who have been to the tour this year and also just people listening to you tonight there are tons of text messages coming in so listen thanks for taking the call and good luck for You're the welcome. rest of the week Thanks very much. Brilliant stuff. That's Nicholas Roach there with uh, an absolutely astonishing explanation of what happened to him on uh, last uh, Saturday just gone. He was riding again there yesterday, but uh, pretty interesting insight into the psychological pain, even more so than the physical pain of what he's going through. I like the way he kind of um, you know, minimizes the physical torture that he's going through there, but talks more about the psychological part of it. That's the best insight from a sportsman I've ever heard, says Dave in Cork. I don't follow cycling much, but Nicholas Roach is the most interesting sportsman we have, says Alan in Salorgan. Can't help but be up for Nicholas and hope things go well for him. Such a likable guy, says Rory. Hi, lads. Was on the Plateau de Bell on Saturday with the tricolour. Saw Nicholas su- suffering but digging in. Fierce determination shown by him and wish him all the best for the Alps, says Warren.